of supply manager mainly depends on organizational size, small, medium, and large. Okay? How, how many employees is if the company is small company? How many employees do you think that the company is small company? How many? You all want to speak. Yeah? You, don't, you all want to take a nap. How many employees do you think that the company is small company? How many is large company? Below 100. One? Below 100. The small company. Below 100 is small company and uh, large? Up to what? <laughs> Fast car. Fast car. Is small or large? Large. 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 How many employees in fast car? Thousand. Sixty thousand. Over sixty thousand. Small. I think all time is all small. <laughs> Depends on the organizational size. In small and medium size organization, there is no such supply department. Okay? So the responsibility of supply are assigned to those who the employee re review the responsibility is a secondary responsibility. Okay? It's not his primal responsibility. And uh, the purchase is shared by a variety of individuals who have no supply expertise, expertise and the background. Okay? And uh, they purchase their own requirements from local retailers, like small company. Okay? Okay. So, like I asked Hope last week, do you willing to hire Handy as your buyer? Are you willing to? Yes. So, because Handy has no supply expertise and the background. Understand? But in Larger organization, the issue involved in the structure is centralized, decentralized, and a hybrid. Like the word said, what is centralized mean? Centralized. Central organization. Assigned to a central organization, not spread the, the purchase decision to local branch. Centralized. Okay. Understand? And uh, there is a single department in the big company control and uh, manage the purchasing for the whole organization. Okay? Do you think centralized organization structure is good or not? It's good or not? It has both sides. Um, good and bad. Good, uh, what is the pro and con? What are the pro <laughs> A good side is to be like, uh, they will correct the order, order from every department to be necessary one department and when they are buying they will be buying with a big lot. Yeah, and get, get a, a lower a, price. Yes. And uh, the cost. This I mentioned is uh, they have to wait in wasting of time. Yeah. The response time is long, slow and they can access to local market. Okay? 
the opposite of centralized is decentralized. Decentralized means that the supply related functions disperse through the organization and are granted to local branch or department. So the branch can purchase their own requirement by their own. Is that good or bad or not? There is a lot of advantage and a disadvantage. <laughs> advantage. There is a lot of advantage and a disadvantage. So there is hybrid structure. Look at the sky. The hybrid structure combines the advantage of both centralized and the decentralized. So what is hybrid structure mean? I know me. <laughs> How is the structure executed? For some, maybe for some type of supplies, they can be so. done and, in a decentralized uh, way, and for another type, in a centralized way. Maybe, for example, those not exceeding 50,000 entities. So if you want to buy a spring, spring? Yeah, that can be done. That's decentralized. Yes. But if you want to buy a car, car? maybe. But the car, if you want to build a plan, yes. like the case that yeah. is centralized. So the hybrid structure is the authority and the responsibility shared between a central supply organization and the business unit. How does it work? May link to a centralized depend. Some decisions are centralized and executed by decentralized unit branch. Okay, there is an example named Center Lab. I, I don't know how to L E D. And D. Center Lab. 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 Center Lab is a hybrid structure. The organization where strategic direction is centralized. Strategic long-term decision is centralized. And the execution, execution is decentralized. Okay? Okay. I have only 10 minutes left. I want to spend time introduce the the chief purchasing officer because maybe someday you could be the chief purchasing officer. <coughs> it's a common common name in purchasing field. Chief purchasing officer, and another concept is reporting relationship. Do you ever hear the word? The reporting line defines the important, the role of purchasing in the company. Okay. The chief purchasing officer, CPO, defined as the most senior top level executive in a firm's co corporate office. Okay, 
the role focused on sourcing, procurement, and the supply management. Okay. It is his or her responsibility to source goods and the service and to negotiate price and the contract. There is no common title for chief purchasing officer. Some company may have named, uh, give the title of VP of Supply. What is VP? Vice President. Vice President. Is that high enough? Hi. Vice President. High enough. Yeah. Vice President of Purchasing. Vice President. Vice President. Director of Global Procurement. General Manager of Supply. That's the title of Chief Purchasing Officer. Do you want to be a chief purchasing officer? No. Why? I want you to be can CEO. decide a lot of things. I want to be CEO. You want to be a CEO? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so his decision is right because chief purchasing officer has to report his decision to CEO. Understand? Understand? So let me introduce the profile of a CPO. The average age of a CPO was 46. Old enough to be your parents? The average career length to date of a CPO was 22 years. Almost retired, right? And uh, the youngest CPO in the survey was age 35. Mm. How can you be a CPO in a company? Think. <coughs> How can you be a CEO? A lot of CPO are hired from other company. Understand? Understand? A lot of CPO are hired from other company or transfer its job within the company. The bottom line is you have you must have a lot of practical experience, not just management, also engineering background. <coughs> okay. Okay. Understand. So there are at least two experts, expertise of a CPO. Okay? And 79% uh, were male, and then one of the 45% were graduates, and 14% uh, had an MBA qualification. Okay? The trend of a CBO is education level are increasing, reporting lines are changing. We will discuss what is reporting line. And uh, hire from outside the organization rather than promoting from within. Okay? Increasing being hired from functional area rather other than supply. Okay. The next one is important. CPO reporting line change every 2.5 years on average. The CPO role is still new nowadays in many organizations. So, student, what is reporting line? What is, guess, what is reporting line? 
they were purchasing. Like I said, I have to report to Hendy because he is the CEO. So what is the reporting line? <coughs> the root of information? Hmm? Root of information? Root? Root. L O U T E. L? L O U T E. Root. It's like the structure of the organization mm -hmm. which specifies where a certain employee, or in this case, the, the employee is responsible for purchasing and the yield accountant, where they can report their duties in the end. So let's take 10 minutes break. <laughs> <laughs>